Hey, we're here with Milton Walker from Intel, and we're here to talk about CPUs and motherboards. You know, um, it was last year, Intel had the Core 2 Duos and the Core 2 Quads, and everyone had it all figured out. We know what's what and what goes where. And then Intel came out with uh, the Core i3, the Core i5, and the Core i7. And now exactly. we all got to learn how this stuff works right. one more time. So um, so what's the, what's the story here? I mean, obviously, um, the way I usually approach things, right, is if the number's higher, the thing is better. That's right. Okay, is that's that right. and that's pretty much how I live my entire yeah. life. <laughs> and, and is that is, does it sort of work that way and with the new the Intel Core processors? Yeah, that's the okay. way it works. We've kind of we've got a, a good, better, best lineup of, of CPUs. So if you look at um, the the kind of the entry level in the core in the 2010 core family, you've got your i3. Right. So you start with i3, and, and i3 is associated with smart performance. So it's an entry level kind of product in the mainstream to to be able to have a beginning of a, a good performing system. The other thing is um, there's some there's some pretty significant performance differences from the Core 2 Quad, Core 2 Duo to the, the current 2010 Core okay. technology processor. So um, in this slide we'll you know just show a basic you know comparison between the two. So um, What's good about i3, or you know, some of the features uh, surrounding i3 are, um, it's a it's a dual core processor that has hyperthreading. Okay. So that ends up being four threads. So right? so so, so it's got four threads. so it's got two cores, but the but it can work on four things at a time. Right. Okay. So it's got two cores, hyperthreading, and then also the i3 with this new generation of CPU, they we've embedded um, the graphics core into the CPU. Okay. Right? So it's got integrated. Uh, graphics into the CPU, and we call that uh, um, HD. It's our HD uh, graphics core. Okay, so so you, so essentially you've moved the graph. So if you if you had a motherboard that had integrated graphics, like this, essentially moves the chip from the motherboard or from the graphics card from the chipset right there into, onto, right, the, exactly. onto the onto the chip onto the CPU itself. Exactly. Yep. And, and so how does that work when you combine it with a motherboard? Like what motherboards are, uh, is the Core i3 it, compatible? With? And that's a great question because I think a lot of people a lot of people ask that, right? So what do I put with my i3 in order to get the graphics and the chip uh -huh. off to my screen? So one of the, the, uh, the boards, we've got a few different Intel-based boards. Um, this board here is the uh, DH55HC board. Okay. And this board comes with the, the pairing um, graphics, so like the output graphics for an i3 or a, you know, another CPU that has graphics on board. Okay. So the best, the easiest way to do this is i3, and a, and a board that has the graphics. So the H55 chipset is a chipset that has integrated graphics, or has the, the, the external part of the graphics to okay. support the, uh, the, the CPU. Gotcha, so, so this has all of the, all the necessary connectivity. The, it has the, 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 the actual plug to plug right. it into. It's got the chip that'll communicate with the CPU to exactly. take care of the graphics. So, so the i3 with the H55 is kind of the best combo. Right. In terms of, it's a, it's in terms of value combo. and performance, right? right? It's, a, it's a great combo. Now, that there's another board. There's the H55TC, which is a, a similar version, a similar board, but it's okay. a little bit smaller. So the H55HC is an ATX. The H55TC is a micro ATX. Okay. All right, cool. So, so this is a so this is a good combo right. for somebody who's looking for really good performance uh, and not necessarily wants to spend a whole ton of money, right? right. You want you want you want a solid computer that's so going to run good. and handle just about anything. Right. All right. So, so then we move on to the Core i5s, so right? Better. Right. So, All right. So, now so now we're better. so now we're getting into 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 CPUs that are that are uh, a little more serious, right? That's, that's correct. So, what's the difference between the i3 and the i5? What are we gaining by going to the i5? So, yeah. So, good question. i5 steps up by giving us turbo. Okay. Right, so what, we, we talked a little bit about turbo in a, in, a, in, a, in a previous video, but turbo allows you to get more, um, more performance out of your CPU. Uh, it's basically like kind of built-in overclocking. Oh, so it's like power on demand, right? right? Exactly. So it's like, so it's like when the when the when this when the computer senses that that something serious is going on, it's able to squeeze out a little right. more power when you need it. Right. Back in my okay. day, back in my day, we had a button on the yeah. front of the CPU. Yeah, the turbo button the on the front. Exactly. Kicked you push it, that kicked, and you kicked get it. it from uh, from 33 to 40 megahertz. Well, back in my day, it was from 8 megahertz to oh. 10 megahertz. That was a lot. That was like that was like <laughs> two years before my day. <laughs> so. So we've got two i5s up here, and these actually these two i5s are a little bit different. Okay. This i5, the i5-650, actually has integrated graphics. All right. And it's a dual core. It has integrated graphics, but it has hyperthreading. Okay. So you get four threads, right, with your integrated graphics. This is a quad core, 
i5. So this doesn't have integrated graphics, but it has four, but four true real cores. cores. Right. Okay. So now, so would would you pair? So this one right here is a dual core and integrated graphics. Right. So this would be great for somebody who's looking for again an integrated graphics solution right. and solid solid performance. For somebody who's looking to use their own graphics card and wants uh, and wants a wants a serious quad core CPU. Right. You yeah, then, then you go with the i5. Exactly. So what so what boards are going to work with these now? So again, we could take that same the same H55 board, okay. uh, the HC or the TC and pair it with this with the integrated graphics. So now we have because this one supports integrated, supports graphics. integrated graphics. All right. right. Um, we could take something like a DP55 WB board and pair that with the uh, 750. Okay, now and now that would then require you to have a graphics card. A graphics card, exactly. Okay, so somebody who's looking for that extra performance out of a graphics card, uh, gamers, somebody that wants to see like serious 3D performance that integrated graphics can't necessarily bring, and you want an i5, this is what you want to go with here. Right. This is this is the combo. Exactly. And if you're not necessarily looking to use discrete graphics cards, you just kind of want to, you want solid performance for your office applications and yep. maybe for some video editing and stuff like that, then this would be all right over exactly. here. Exactly. Okay. So those are the i5s. Right. Now we got to talk about the this this is the 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 thing that that geeks are lusting over now. <laughs> Everyone's very excited about the right. Core i7. The Core right. i7 is apparently where it's at. What's the story so with the Core do, i7? Yeah, so let's go with these. So okay. we got the 860, which is a quad core. Um, all of the i7s don't have integrated graphics. Okay. Well, I guess I could say none of the i7s have integrated graphics. All right. But there's a there's a difference, a significant, dif significant difference between the i7-860 and the i7-9 series. Bigger box. Bigger box, exactly. exactly. Bigger box means bigger CPU. Well, <laughs> yep. And that's kind of true, right? Because the, the 860 is an 1156 socket okay. CPU. So it's got 1160, uh, 1156 pins. The 920 is 1366. So this is a totally different bigger size. So, okay, right. okay. So this is a totally different size chip. Right. This is so th these would not even work in the same board. Not, no. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. So what's the so why would you choose one over the other? What's what what makes this one deserving of being so much bigger? Well, what's good about the 920 is that it supports. It takes, you know, what's in the 860 and and just augments everything. So okay. you've got you've got more uh, a bigger pipe for graphics. All right. Right. You've got more uh, bandwidth for memory. So this has the, the tri um, uh, band memory. So you've okay. got three, you know, three uh, memory DIMMs uh, to interface with this where you had two, two channels for this. So okay. three channel, two channel. Um, different boards again. So those are the, the main differences. You get a lot more bandwidth, you get a lot more performance out of the 900 series, the okay. i7 900 series than the 860 or the 8. Series. Yeah, but the 800 series is still a really serious yeah, yeah. CPU. I mean, this it's you know it goes from i3, i5, i7. It's good, better, and best. Okay, right? and then and then i7 920 bestest. Right. I mean, you, once you once you get into the 920, you know the next step up is all extreme. Okay. Right? So it's the you know 975. By the way, by the way take that to your marketing department. Right. Tell them but <laughs> good, better, best, bestest, bestest. <laughs> right there. All right. So what boards are these going to work with? Okay. Are we are we looking at kind of the same situation, right. or are we stepping into similar. a different world of boards here? Similar. If okay. You, if you've got the the i7 860, you're going to probably be looking for a little more significant board, a little more substantial. You know, maybe some overclock. Locking features you may you, you you might want some um, you know some cool things on your board right and what we would probably pair with this 860 is the DP 55 kg so um, this has some basic overclocking ability you can you can scale up the memory you can change the host frequency bus okay uh, the host bus frequency the B clock um, so you got some some nice things here you got some better um, you know, better audio, better graphics support, and you know, so that's, it, that's a so, great board. So solid enthusiast features uh, right. on this for e sure. Exactly. All right. So then, if we so then when we step into the the world of the the 920, right? Then we're looking at uh, at this right here. Right. We're looking at the X58 SO board, um, and well, actually the X58 any board that's is the X58 chipset. Okay. Um, supports the uh, the 900 series. Okay. I7. So what you get here is you get multiple by 16 graphics cards, right? All right. That's and, and they all support by 16 PCIe. Um, so you got a ton of graphics ba bandwidth. You've got um, the uh, the three channel memory support for for the DDR3. Um, right. You know, it's it's got this board has a ton of stuff on it. It's got uh, RAID on board. It's got you know it's got the cool heat sinks. It's got lights. It's got everything. This is a great board to right pair on. with the 920. Okay.
So, so essentially, the, so the main difference is here. So what we're, so what we're essentially dealing with, the, the i3 is a solid processor, solid dual core processor. Right. It has integrated, integrated graphics, graphics on board. So if you combine that with a motherboard that, that supports those integrated graphics, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a graphics card at all. Of course, you can add your own graphics card if you want to still. Right. But, but if, as long as you pair it with the right board that has the correct integrated graphics. Then you don't need a graphics card. All right. The i5. We'll uh, talk about caveats to that after we're done. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then so the i, and the i5 is stepping it up a little bit. You can get the i5 with integrated graphics and dual core right. or no integrated quad graphics core. and quad core. Correct. And then, and, then, and then the motherboard works the same way as for the i3, essentially. And then the i7 is when you're stepping into the best CPUs, best right. in class, quad core, quad core across the board, and just serious performance on these things. Right, and, and the quad core CPUs all have uh, hyper-threading as well, so it okay. looks like you have eight, eight right on. CPUs. All right, so, so, what, so what, are the, what are the next steps? If you're looking at building a monster system, what, else, what other things are, are you wanting to look at here in order to, to make, that, make that happen? Because I know there's some new tech on the market that can make some serious difference. Yeah, you know, one of the things that, that we've been doing a lot of and, and I think has been getting a lot of press is SSDs. Absolutely. Right? So solid state drives, Intel has one of the fastest solid state drives in the universe. Well, I don't right. know if we can say in the universe <laughs> legally, but... Because you don't know what kind of SSDs the aliens have. E exactly. Right. So, you know, very, very fast. If you want to speed up your system, one of the best ways you can do that is, is with an SSD. Okay. And I, I could, I've, and I've, I've done it. I add an SSD to my computer, and it's it's the biggest difference in speed I've ever seen right. I mean, the latency happen on my just, computer. The latency just go, you know, yeah, boot time Yeah, boot times right. shrink to, to what feel like nothing. Like, right. it's really, really impressive. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Right on. Yep. So, so memory is another thing that you want to focus on. Okay. Having an XMP or extreme memory profile memory um, allows you to get more out of the memory. Uh, let you overclock support, it more easily, right? Yeah, let you right. do uh, supports, you know, just faster bandwidth. So, you know, those are the main things. I mean, you can do like uh, on the X58, you can do RAID. So you can RAID, you put a couple of drives together and RAID, and that's going to speed up your performance. Um, and, you know, I mean, those are the things that you want to focus on. Uh, you know, right make on. sure you got a good chassis, good cooling, um, and, you know, you got a good system. Very cool. Lights, well, add some lights and you're all good to go. Always need the lights, right? <laughs> so, so yeah. So, is, is there anything else you want to get out there while we're while we're talking about this stuff? Because I think it's pretty easy to understand. Yep. It's definitely easy easy to figure out. I think I think one of the things that kind of that, that, that kind of throws people though, because it's it's a brand new sort of deal, right. is that is how you the, put them together. Yeah, is that because because we've never before had CPUs with integrated graphics on them, right? And so now you're so now you're having to look at it just a little bit different way. It's like, do I want the integrated graphics or do I want the four cores? Right. And and so so it's you know as long as you're able to. Get your mind about around that. It's a piece right. of cake. Right. And the only thing that you really want to make, you want to be aware of, or a couple of things that you want to be aware of, if you have an integrated graphics CPU, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you've got a, a board that supports graphics. So okay. it's going to be an H55 or an H57, which is kind of the next level up right. of base board. Now, if you have an integrated graphics CPU and you still want to use a discrete controller, you can get a, a, a graphics or a board that doesn't have graphics on right. it, but you're going to have to use a discrete controller. You're right. going to have to add a graphics card, um, and that that goes you know the same way. If you have a um, uh, an i5 that doesn't have graphics, or if it, if you have an i5 that doesn't have graphics, you can use a board that has graphics on board, but. Um, realize you're still going to have to use an integrated, uh, sorry, a discrete graphics controller because sure. it doesn't have the pairing. Because there's nowhere to nowhere to plug it in. Right. Well, there's nowhere to the the even though it has graphics on the board, it doesn't have graphics in the CPU, so gotcha. they, they don't match. Okay. Um, and the best way, ultimately, the best way to find out what's compatible is if you go out to processormatch.intel.com, and then you can plug in your, your CPU, you can plug in your board, and kind of figure out what supports what. All right, so processormatch.intel.com, and that's really where all, your, where all your questions can be answered. Exactly. All right, cool, but it all seems very, it all seems relatively simple. I mean, really, I think the only, the only hang-up people might have is trying to, is figuring out the integrated graphics because it's just so new, right. but, but other than that, it seems simple enough to me. Very cool. Good stuff. Uh, this is the one I want. <laughs> it's got the bigger box. Right. Thanks, right. thanks, Milton. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Right on.